Not yet. Not now. Just stay in that stay in that moment right now, Journey. Stay right there. Let's not rush through this. I love when I put together, I say I, put together a message and God just comes in and wrecks it. Right? It's great because he is truly moving here at Journey this morning. What I talked about in the first service is nothing what I'm talking about right now. Truly, I feel the Holy Spirit moving. And as they're talking about, there's somebody in here. Right? I'm going to read a story real quick before we get going even more. There's a story of an adulterous woman, right? And she's found in this adultery, but you could be finding yourself in something else, right? You could be finding yourself in people coming against you, wanting to stone you, wanting to do all these things bad to you, right? But Jesus comes to her right where she's at, right in the midst of all the stuff that we may think, well, why is he coming to me? He does, why would he even, I'm an adulterous person, or I've done this or that. But he meets her right there and he bends down. And I love this verse and it says, he says this, he says, he straightened, up to the, he straightened up and said to them, he who is out sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. I don't know about you, but I've always wondered what he wrote on the ground to her, right? I've always wondered what is it that he wrote because he st- stooped down twice to write something to her. Now when they heard this, they began leaving one by one, beginning the older ones. And then later he says, in verse 10, and straightened up, Jesus said to her, woman, where are they? There was no one left there, right? Did no one condemn you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, I do not condemn you either. Somebody in here needs to hear that. No matter what it is you're going through, no matter how bad you think you are right now, and Jesus doesn't love me, there's no way... He says right here, and I do not condemn you either. I truly believe what he wrote on the ground, and this is my belief, he wrote the word grace. He wrote the word grace because his grace is sufficient for her. He said, go from now on, though, and do not sin any longer. I read Revelations 2 in first service, and it's the book, it's Jesus, it's a letter that's written to the church of Ephesus. I'm going to paraphrase it, but in that letter, he's telling them, you've left your first love. You need to come back and repent. Turn away from those wicked ways and do it no more. See, today we are supposed to be talking about healings and miracles and the gifts of healings and miracles. The Lord just did a healing and a miracle in Journey Church right here. Worship was... Worship was what I believe it's going to be, right? That is the, he he doesn't have to do crazy stuff. He doesn't have to grow a leg back, even though I believe he's going to do it. Can he do it? Yes, he can do it. He doesn't have to do that stuff. There's a story of the woman at the well. He met her right where she was at. Met her right there, was waiting for her, just like Pastor Adam said. Getting up in the morning, right, is a sacrifice, But when you get up in the morning, he's already sitting there waiting for you. He's waiting for the encounter with you. And he meets this Samaritan woman at the well. And if you don't know the story, a Jewish man talking to a Samaritan woman, he's breaking the culture barrier down. That doesn't happen. And he's saying, I'm coming to everybody. No matter who you are in here, he's coming to you. That encounter's for you. But he changed her. He transformed her from the inside out. He set a fire in her that went on to change her town. That town heard about her, heard about her story, the testimony of her, and he changed that town. They came because of her testimony, but check it out. In John 4, right, it says this in 39, now from that city, many of the Samaritans believed in him because of the word of the woman who had testified. And later in 42, they say, and they were saying to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves and know that this one truly is the savior of the world. It was no longer about what she said, but they had experienced life transformation. They had heard the word. Pastor Eric talked about that before last week. He said, the faith is by hearing the word. He didn't have to do some craziness or grow a layback or anything else, but he can 
The gifts of healings and miracles that are operational, right? Paul tells us to earnestly desire all these gifts, right? They all need to be in operation. Literally right after this story in John 4, he talks about the official son. And he did some miraculous, crazy stuff in that story, right? This official had heard about Jesus. Most of us in here have heard about Jesus. They've heard about what he's done. And he's coming to him and he's saying, please heal my son. He's dying. Jesus tells him, listen to this. He tells him in John 4 here. He says, unless you people see signs and wonders, you simply will not believe. So he's doing it because these people are only looking for the signs and the wonders. But he says, go, your son is healed. And he left. He left and went back. And as he's going home, his slaves came to him and said, your son's healed. Your son's healed. And he said, when did this happen? In 53, so the father knew that it was at that hour in which Jesus said to him, your son is alive. And he himself believed and the entire household believed. You see, Jesus can do a crazy miracle, a healing, but it's always to point. It's a sign. It's always to point to the kingdom and ultimately to deliver somebody from eternal death and save the sinner which was lost. But with these gifts operating, right, with these gifts operating, there's decency and order instilled with inside of these gifts. And we see it with the next story in John 5. The next story in John 5, this is all found in these little scriptures, these little tiny bit of scripture inside of this big book of John 4 and 5. You see three different ways that he's doing stuff with healings and miracles. In verse 5, there's a man sitting by the pool. He's been ill for 38 years. How many times has Jesus walked by going in and known it was not the time yet for him to be healed? Right? What did this guy continue to do? He continued to chase after a pool. He continued to chase after this pool that was stirring up because he put his hope and his faith and his trust into that pool. It just shows us that no matter what, no matter what, our works will not save us. Our works will not heal us. It is by putting our faith, hope, and trust into the one that can. Amen. And what he did there... He went in and he saved, he healed that one. If you're operating in the gifts of healings and miracles, you cannot just go around swinging your coat and heal whoever you want, whenever you want. There's decency, there's order. You can't just walk into a hospital and heal every single person in that hospital. Can God do it? Yes, he can. There's decency and order inside of all of it. My wife, if you want to see a real life miracle, my wife was pregnant with Ethan. And when she was pregnant with Ethan, there was a cyst on her side in her uterus. They didn't think Ethan was going to make it. They said, we're probably going to have to abort the baby so that Rach would live. We didn't believe it. We came and we came to Mary Jo. And I truly believe she was operating in the gifts of healing at the time. That doesn't mean she's operating in it now. Paul operated with the gifts of healing. He couldn't heal somebody. He had to leave somebody sick as he left. There's a time. It just doesn't mean you can just go around doing whatever you want. But I truly believe at this time she was operating it. And we didn't believe and we stood on what the word said. And that's what we believed in. So we went back to the hospital and it was healed. It was gone. It was a miraculous healing. There was no other explanation other than God gets the credit for that. But God knew what he was doing. If you know Ethan, he is going to be a world changer. He's sharing the gospel in school. He's bringing his Bible to school. He's changing people's lives at school. That's what it's about. Those are the healings. You can see a ton of healings and miracles inside of the Bible. There's tons of them. Deafness being cured. There's walking on water. There's paralysis being cured, leprosy being, he does some weird things, right? He can just speak it and it happens. He spits in people's eyes. I'm not saying we're going around here spitting in people's eyes, but he can do what he wants when he wants to point to the kingdom of God. And that's what it's about. 
but Mike, what happens when the healing doesn't come? I must be doing something wrong. I must be living in some sort of sin, right? I must not be doing something right. I must not have enough faith. It's what I hear. It's what I've said to myself sometimes, right? But literally, I can just debunk what those three things I just said. The woman at the well was definitely living in sin, right? She didn't clean herself up before she came to him. He did the cleaning. He met her where she was at but didn't leave her the way that she was, right? The guy, the official definitely was not doing the right thing. He was chasing after signs and wonders. He wasn't chasing after the Lord. He wasn't chasing after the one that does the signs and the wonders. Chasing after the giver, right? That's who he needs to be chasing after. And the guy at the pool had misguided faith all along. Chasing after a pool to be stirred up to be able to get his stuff. Jesus still healed him. You've got to understand, sickness and death entered this world the day that the first sin happened in the garden. And it's been in this world ever since. Sometimes our own stupid stuff can cause problems, right? It can. If you drink and drive, you do drugs, you eat too much sometimes, it can lead to premature sickness, premature illness, sometimes death. But death came because of a result of that first sin. It doesn't have to always be a sin that's, that's got you here. In John 9, if you notice, we've been in the book of John. That's where I found a lot of this stuff. That's where God pointed it at. In John 9, you find a story of a man who was blind since birth. And in John 9, this is what's said. Jesus passed by. He saw a man who had been blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? this man or his parents, that he would be born blind. Jesus answered, it was neither that this man sinned nor his parents, but it was so that the works of God might be displayed in him. So just because you're going through something, it doesn't always have to be because of a sin that you've done. It can be to glorify God in the midst of it. And that's what we're called to do. When we are going through something, it's to glorify God in the midst of what we're going through. And can I tell you that every sin, every weakness, death can all be used for the glory of God. Romans 8 tells us for the glory, or Romans 8 tells us that he works all things for the glory of God, for those who believe in him, right? He works all things, not just good, all things. Ultimately, to save those which are lost, because that's what his, he wants to do, save those which are lost. But Mike, my loved one loved Jesus, God-fearing person, man or woman, their healing didn't come. Their healing may not have come on this earth, but they are healed. They are fully, 100% healed, restored, dancing with Jesus at home in a better place than they are right now. And if you believe that they have put their faith, hope, and trust in that, rejoice in that moment. There's mourning here on earth because they're not with us. But they are in such a better place. I saw this photo of this kid that passed away. He must have been, I don't even know, he was young. But the photo is of his grave, and it's a wheelchair, but he's jumping out of his wheelchair. That's what's on the grave on this headstone, right? Because he's healed. He's whole once again. And that's what we put our faith, hope, and trust in. You see, the Lord's will is for everyone to be healed, but first spiritually. First spiritually, then physically. That physical healing may come when we are with him, dancing in heaven face to face. But what does uh, Paul tell us? Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians, I think, that, I think you have that one. 2 Corinthians, he tells us, you see, Paul was pleading for his healing to come. He wanted his healing to come, right? Take this away from me. After that, he says this. And he has said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Right? We are to boast about our weakness, right? It is better, right, for us to be weak and for him to be made strong. You see, we can't always just pray a prayer and then be healed and it's all good to go. Prayer is not about what we want. 
It's about our line in ourselves with the Father and what He wants. Jesus was in the garden. He was praying, please take this cup from me. But He said, only your will be done, not mine. Right? Not mine. I'm going to close here. And as I close, I want to just talk about James 5. You see, when we're sick, when we're going through something, whether it be a disease, whether it's we're praying for someone else that's not even around us, God can do the miraculous. But he doesn't tell us to go chase after somebody with the gift. He doesn't tell us to go chase after that miracle healer. He tells us to go chase after Jesus and pray to Jesus. He tells us in James... He tells us in James 5, he says, Is anyone among you suffering? Then he must pray. Is anyone cheerful? He is to sing praises. Is anyone among you sick? The word he uses here for the sick in Greek is the sick, the ones with disease, the ones suffering, whatever it may be. Then he must call for the elders, those that are mature in the faith, right? The elders will be down here in the front. There'll be people down here in the front in the prayer team too. To pray over him, anointing him with oil. That's that symbol of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord and the prayer of the faith will restore the one who is sick. If he has committed sins, they will be forgiven him. That word he uses at the end there for sick is only used twice in the New Testament. And that word can mean weary. Those of you that are going through something, those of you that are going through trials, those of you that are going through a sickness, someone else in your family is going through a sickness, it can bring weary on you. It can bring you down. You can forget about your first love, as what Revelation 2 says. The enemy will attack at those points, and he's telling us right here to go to those that are mature in the faith, to partner around you, to build you back up. Amen? That's what we're called to do. Even if the small groups are going on in the back, it's called to get plugged in, to get around those believers, to build you back up. And as you're going through this, continue to look for God's hand in everything. Continue to look for his hand in everything because he's always going to do whatever he needs, right, to bring glory to the kingdom of God. And he uses everything in that. Amen? Amen. So rise with me real quick. Father God, I just come to you right now. We give you the glory, we give you the praise. And as the altar team comes up here and the elders come up here, Father, right now I pray that if there's anybody in here that may find themselves in this weary situation, Father, that are needing a touch from you, Father, that are needing the prayer of the righteous, Father, to partner with them, to build them back up so they continue to fight the fight, to continue to spread your message, to see the kingdom of heaven come. Father, I pray that they would come. And we give you the glory, we give you the praise for your miraculous healings. I pray that if anybody in here is looking for healing right now, Father, whatever it may be, or if there's someone in their life that's looking for healing, Father, I pray that they would come up here as well to receive, to receive what it is that you have, Father. You are waiting for them up here. But Father, most importantly, I pray that if there's someone in here right now that has never made a decision to follow after you. If, you, if they're in here right now, Father, I pray that you would lead them to the front. I pray that they would partner with somebody, Father, to help them in their walk. Father, let them hear what that adulterous woman heard. That no matter what, that sin that they may be in, whatever it is, that they can repent, they can turn from that, and that you don't condemn them, Father. You don't look at them any differently, Father. They are still a son and daughter of the Most High. Father, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the praise and everything. We thank you, Father. We say, come. Come, have your way, Father.